So if you saw my if you saw my post this morning, I believe the uh, title of my post was um, "Career Women Struggle with Men." Okay, so that's the topic of discussion for today. And I wanna uh, I want to address this discussion from an angle of wanting good for others. I don't want to sound like I'm bashing, okay? I want young girls, all women for that matter, but particularly young girls to get the best bite of the apple that they can, okay? To, to have the best possible opportunity to pair up with the best possible man that they can for them and for life, hopefully, right? What are you looking for, Sam? Yes, and, uh, no, it's fine. It's not here. Sakurbab, Sakurbab. Okay. Okay, now, ladies, you will most probably agree with me, as I mentioned in my TikTok video, if you've watched it, if you haven't watched it. If you're a PhD, you will most likely want to pair with a man who is also a PhD, right? If you're a 100k a year woman, you will most likely want to pair with a man who is 100k a year, okay? It is a fact, and I'm quoting facts to you that I've taken from Jordan Peterson, okay? Most of you probably heard who Jordan Peterson is. And that is, women are hypergamous by nature. That is, they want to pair across and up dominance hierarchies. Okay? And it is also a statistical fact, and I've taken it once again from Jordan Peterson, so you can understand the credibility of what I am quoting, that the more successful a woman becomes, the smaller her pool of men that she has to choose from. She has less options. Why is that? Well, it's quite logical. Think about it. If you're a PhD woman, the choice of men that you have to choose from is precisely 1.4%. Only 1.4% of men actually have a PhD. That's not including the gay men. That's not including the married men. And that's not including the old timers or even the young men for that matter. As for the available heterosexual men in your age bracket that you're looking for, the number is probably much smaller. Now, you might hear this and say, so what are you telling us, Mahdi? That we should basically be just bums, uneducated bums. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just laying out the facts for you. You need to understand, you can't have it all. You can't have a high-flying career and the man of your dreams as well. Some, I'm sure some women have managed to, to hit the lottery twice. I'm sure they have. But for the most part, it is a statistical, almost impossibility to have a very high flying career as a woman and find a man who is an even higher flyer than you. And that's simply because of your hypergamous nature. You cannot justify getting with a man who earns less than you or, his, or who is less educated than you. It doesn't satisfy your hypergamous tendencies. So just understand that. That's all I'm asking is for you ladies to understand the more successful you become, the narrower pool of choice you have to choose from in the pool of men because of what you're looking for. That's it, period. This is nothing personal. This is just a fact. Now, you might ask, but what about men? Don't they have the same problem? Men have the opposite problem. It's not a problem. They have the opposite conundrum. And that is, the more successful a man becomes, the greater his pool of choice to choose from. The more successful he becomes, the more women who will be happy to pair up with him because he's so high. He fulfills the hypergamous needs of such a large group of women. And this is the second, the, the second blade that you have to contend with. And that is a successful woman. Great. She's looking for a successful man. The problem is she's in competition with a huge group of women because a successful man has the pick of the lot. He fulfills the hypergamous needs of many women. So then you must ask yourself, what is a successful man looking for? Is he looking for a career woman? I can tell you this. Matter of factly, that a high flying, high performing, high value man will be very reluctant in the least and will almost definitely not consider it at worst 
of pairing with an equally high flying woman. And I'll tell you why. It's not because he's insecure, although certainly this can play on his insecurities. Let's be honest here. And that's a whole other discussion which we'll get to. But it's not because of that. It's because he knows how much time it takes, how much sweat, how many sleepless nights, how many early mornings, how much graft, how much stress it takes to get, get to, excuse me, and maintain that position in the first place. He knows how hard it is. And he doesn't want to pair with a woman who's going to have the same hectic life as him. He wants a woman to complement his life, to be his support system, his foundation, a woman who can extend his legacy. That's what he wants. Well, that's what a high value man wants. So again, to summarize this discussion, the more successful you become as a woman, more power to you. Just understand the flip side of that is this narrower pool of choice of men you have to choose from. And if you're a very career oriented woman, you must also consider that you are going to lose your best years in terms of fertility and beauty. Okay, it takes a long time to establish yourself as a career man or woman. You're talking 30 plus. But a woman who gets to 30 plus who wants to have children, but hasn't yet had children is on a timer, big time. That clock is ticking. She has five years from 30 to 35 until she enters high risk pregnancies. And from 35 to 40, her chance of conceiving falls off a cliff. It falls off of a cliff. And from 40 plus, her chances of conceiving a child are negligible. Basically none. So again, this is another dilemma that a career woman, a successful woman has to negotiate. Not only does she, does she want a man who's more successful than herself, but that man has so much choice of women to choose from. So now she's in competition with a huge group of men. And then on top of all of that, she's on a timer. And then she has to ask herself, what is that high value man looking for? Does he want a woman as successful as me? And again, I will tell you, for the most part, and I'm sure there are exceptions, but for the most part, a high flying, high value, high achieving man wants nothing to do with a high flying, high achieving woman because he knows the stress involved and he doesn't want a partner who's going to bring that stress to the household as well. She will be mentally absent, like he's mentally absent. It will be like two ghosts living in the household. He doesn't want that. 